What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing the Power Rangers deck building games expansion Flying Higher. This one is based on Power Rangers in space. It even incorporates the mechanics of the search for Zordon, the evil forces of Dark Spectre. You get the Psycho Rangers, the United Alliance of Evil. So it's dripping with theme. It is designed by Matt Hyra and published by Renegade Game Studios. I'll toss it over to Julie who will tell you more about the game itself. So this is a competitive deck builder that's intended for two to four play players, ages 14 and above, uh, and it plays in about 30 to 70 minutes. And what will you be doing in this version of the deck building game because it's different? Well, you're either going to be signing on the side of the Rangers, looking for Zordon, which will create some energy limitations for the heroes. You will also be able to trigger the effect, the Z wave from the end of Power Rangers in space. And it does have some negative aspects for you, but it will prevent you from potentially losing the game. Or if you're playing on the side of the villains, you'll be trying to get conquest points on Dark Spectre in order to have evil finally rise up and conquer the universe. You're really going to get that epic finale where all the rangers are fighting to save the galaxy from all the evil forces banding together. To do that, you're going to be building a deck of cards by acquiring different cards that are going to be stronger. You're going to be trying to acquire specific things on your card in order to become empowered or morphed and kick some butt. So on that note, Julie, did I miss anything? I don't think so. All right. So we're now going to grab our drink, grab our best friend and Frenemy, fellow ranger, it depends on who they're playing. Frenemy? Hey, there are some frenemies in this. I mean, if you know the story of In Space, Astronema, Caron, with Zane, Andros, it's no, his sister. Too much IP content for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take it to the table. One, One more time. time. Now we're going to take a look at the components for the Power Rangers deck building game, Flying Higher. Now this expansion can be mixed in with a corset or the Zeo stronger than before. You can also just mash this up with another set, uh, such as RPM getting gear and have enough cards to play the game. You will still be missing some components though, so you do need a core set. So you do get the instructions on how to set up the game. There are some differences as there's an oversized Zordon card and Dark Spectre card that you'll be using uh, when you're playing with this expansion. Now it'll depend on the heroes that you pick, but you can just mix these cards in and use them with any expansion. So you got some of the new concepts for this expansion, adding some stuff like search, which is different. There's the Dark Spectre tokens. And then we just got some clarifications and rules with regards to how Zordon works. Now, if you're wondering why there's a big feature on Zordon in this, if you've seen the show, you know that the search for Zordon and saving Zordon, saving the galaxy was a big part of In Space and it was supposed to be the last season. So these are the little tokens that you get uh, for Dark Spectre. Let's take a look at our heroes. So you get Andros, Carlos, TJ, Ashley, and Cassie. We also get Zane. Now, Andros and Zane are the two original in Space Rangers, the others being the Turbo Rangers that join them. We've got Astronema, Ecliptor, Darkonda, the Psycho Rangers, which is awesome. And uh, I just want to take a look at their ability. You might buy heroes from the grid when you do resolve the battle reward and when you attach a hero, exhaust it. So you can get heroes as well because you're still connected. Technically, a Ranger, United Alliance of Evil. I love that because you do get a chance to play as all the villains, and you're really getting a lot of the in-space flavor. Now, I'll just take a look at the back here. You'll see their empowered side. So deal one damage for each villain you control. That, that's really nasty with the Lines of Evil. Psycho Rangers, deal two damage for each hero character you've got attached. Darkonda, deal two damage plus one damage for each equipment in your discard. Ecliptor, force pay two additional energy to activate blocks. Astronema, Queen of Evil, deal one damage for each conquest token on Dark Spectre. Then we got the Silver Space Ranger, just throw a random card in target player's discard pile, if there are four plus. Pink Space Ranger, deal one damage for every six HP you have. If you have five or fewer HP, you get to deal five instead. That's really strong. Yellow Space Ranger, reveal the top card of your deck. You may activate its ability at no cost or draw it. Your next attack this turn cannot be targeted for the blue space ranger deal one deal one deal one which is great for black especially if you can increase that damage and then shuffle the main deck then perform a search deal damage equal to the cost of the revealed card now we didn't take a look at their teenager abilities but we're going to leave some stuff up to the imagination so you do get the new astral blaster basic cards so you may destroy this card to activate your attached signature item at no energy cost then you may discard it. You can also use it as a block to negate a search attack and then discard this card. The new heroes we get, we get Balkan Skull, steal two energy, 
Black Space Ranger, deal one, deal one. Deal three damage if you know starter cards of your discard pile and the attack cannot be negated. Deal four damage and if negated, you have to heal two. Tiger foe discards one location they control, then they take one damage for each they control. Deal three damage and then if negated, the blocker gains one stun. Draw one card and reveal it, attack, deal damage equal to its cost. So pretty cool stuff when it comes to the heroes. Here we got the villain, so target foe gains one stun. Steal two energy. Target foe discards one attached block. And I love the fact that it's Quantron, Finster, Goldar, Divatox. So you're getting these new cards that represent all the villains. Deal three damage plus one damage for each location your team controls. Deal two damage to target foe for each empty slot on their character. This deals six plus damage, you gotta discard the card. Deal five damage, if negated, the blocker discards one card. And then target foe gains two stuns, if negated, discard this card. So I really want to go into detail on the heroes and the villains. I know that's like the key feature. Features. We'll take a look at some of the signature weapons, but for the rest of the stuff, we're just going to show you what you get. You get the new Star Charge, Heavy Armor, the Galaxy Gliders, Master Computers, Force Field Grenades, the Mega Tank, Laser Eyes, lots of cool equipment. Here we got Hollow Projections, Energy Absorption, Booby Traps, Close Quarters, Snap Kick, Let's rock it, I love that. And let's go psycho. I like the fact that you've got both of those. Here we've got the new Zords. So in terms of what you get, we're going with the, the Mega Zords, the sorry for the Mega Voyager. That's where you got the Mega V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. You also get the Mega Winger, you got the Astral Mega Ship, and then we've got the winged Mega Voyager when you got six Zords. Or for five Zords, just the Mega Voyager. So those are what we're getting for the Zords. Of course, you get the Masters as well. Masters for Astronoma, Ecliptor, Darkonda, the Psycho Rangers, and the United License, sorry, Alliance of Evil. So take a look at Astronoma at the start of your turn. Do you one damage for every two conquest tokens on Dark Spectre? So some fairly strong ongoing effects. Here we've got the locations where we've got Angel Grove Surf Spot. KO35, Onyx, and the Dark Fortress. Then we get the signature weapons for all the different characters here. So the Spiral Saber, deal three damage, plus one damage for each search you perform this turn. Astroax negate an attack, the attacker gains one stun. Then the Scar the Card, deal three damage. If negated, you may destroy one card in any hero's discard pile. Deal two, deal two, deal three damage, and if negated, draw a card. Deal two damage if you have 20 plus HP, target foe gains a stun. Now we're on to the villains. Rastaff, put one conquest token on Dark Specter. There's six plus, you gotta discard the card. Steal one energy for every four energy the heroes have. Your attack, so Psycho Rangers and Monster Forms. Your attack this turn, each deal plus one damage for every two conquest tokens on Dark Specter. Darkonda Sword deal two damage plus one damage for each conquest token on Dark Specter. Then Arrogance, gain one villain from the grid or the main deck, discard pile, then attack, deal damage equal to its cost. That is very cool. So as you can see though, with regards to the abilities and things like that, you will need to put into play the Darkonda, sorry, the Dark Specter and Zordon cards if you want to play with the Power Rangers, sorry, the In Space Rangers, or the villains, some of the villains at least, to really gain value. Because Astronomer's Master Card, without having Dark Spectre in play, isn't really going to work. So you have to just take that into account when you're deciding what expansions to play the game with. So there you have it. We've taken a look at the components for Flying Higher. Now keep it right here, as Julie, Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review of this expansion. So Julie, what did you think of the Power Rangers deck building game Flying Higher? With that, we're sort of caught up with the content for the game. There's a new expansion that's been released. I'm not sure when we'll be getting to that one. We've got a lot of other stuff to take a look at, but we wanted to finish up what we had. Yeah, how do I, let's start with, okay, let's start with the positive. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the Black Space Ranger. Uh, he was fun because he's bang, 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 bang. He's all about hitting. Yes, and you, Definitely dis demolish me. You demolish me in both of these games, me not winning any of the plays where we are using the Flying Higher content. Now, just so you know, we did mix Flying Higher with RPM, so we did get to use some RPM elements, but this game just didn't go my way. And one thing that I've kind of felt and noticed is that... Are you going into the negative? I thought we were going... No, no, the, the characters require some very specific things to do very well. Now. 
The good thing about that is the characters can be very powerful and you do a lot of really cool things. I really like Darkonda's master ability, which paired with him lets you actually acquire equipment very easily, and that's his main thing that he actually needs. It also lets you do damage to other characters when you do search attacks. And yeah, that just didn't really work out well for me, unfortunately. It worked this game. out well for me because he's the master I pulled almost off the bat when I was playing Psycho Rangers. Yes, and you never really pulled any enemies that were attacking you, so you kept damaging me, and that was the second master, and you were pulling a lot of really good stuff. So He was my first master, actually. Yes, he was after you acquired yourself, of yes. course. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. Uh, but that's what happens. <laughs> so, you know, that's the positive for me. The positive I'd say is that all of the characters work very well, and they don't you've got some new, I don't no, no, disagree. I want to, I want to, let me finish what I'm saying they work very well, in the context of the way the game is designed, and that's one of the things that we've talked about in other reviews of this, this is very much designed around the team gameplay. And when you're looking at Zordon and Dark Spectre, there's some interesting elements. They do some cool stuff. I like the fact that as a hero, you get 15 energy and you're kind of working on managing it. It was very cool for me playing Andros and with some of the cards that I got to constantly have energy and just be basically stealing yours the entire time. Oh yeah, until I was able to detach the two cards you had put that was basically, you were basically stealing seven energy every time from Yeah, me. just not letting you do much. And Dark Spectre gives you a new win condition, but... When you're playing solo, it's hard to get both of these cards well, to function. Solo. Two player. Sorry. I mean, you're on your, you're by yourself. <laughs> it's hard to get those cards to function, especially with some of the RPM cards that acted as amazing counters to Dark Spectre. Well, yeah, because it wasn't easy for me with the cards, with the villain I was playing and the cards that I had, it wasn't easy for me to get, you know, those tokens on. And every time I got one on, you basically had the location that I ended up buying the second time <laughs> to prevent you from having it, uh, which allows you to add uh, a conquest token or remove one. So you had to remove it every time you got, I got to, yep. you got to remove it. So for that, I didn't think they were great. I, contrary to you, did not appreciate starting at 15 energy. I just, it was, not very helpful for me. Uh, I would have preferred to, you know, just be able to, you know, not have to manage that on top of it. it because it's your max, by the way, just to be clear, you cannot go over 15 energy. You start with 15, but you can't go over 15. And that just didn't work for me with, with this, in this particular game. The other thing that really annoyed me, and that's a deck builder thing, but you talked about the specificity of each of these, you know, these characters. It takes specific things to make them to work. And when you're working with a deck builder, you're not necessarily gonna pull what you need. So when I was playing as a villain, I needed villains or like the the Psycho Rangers require heroes to come up to be able, and nothing was coming up. And villains weren't even coming up for me to buy to be able to get. And I can use, I couldn't use maneuvers or equipment. So for a while I was spinning my wheels until, you know, we realized that I could buy them and still have them in my hand so that I could call my deck afterwards and get rid of some cards. Yeah, you got some good calling mechanics. You started getting the masters, which really got you off to the races. Whereas I definitely made some mistakes, I think in the first game. I do feel like in that first game, it could have been a little bit more competitive. I just did not get enough shards going. I was have, I had a ton of energy. I thought I had to manage my energy a lot more because what happens with Zordon is if you run out of energy, the heroes will lose the game. It's incredibly thematic to Power Rangers in space, so I do really appreciate it, but it can also be a little bit of a hindrance, and it just didn't really work out the way I wanted it to because what I was doing actually kind of bogged me down. I was not getting the cards to morph, and Andros just wasn't very effective. That being said, it did feel like I was still in that game. In the second one, I just... It, the deck building just failed me. I really was not getting any of the shards. I kept getting topping out at like five shards almost every single time. So stuff just wasn't going my way. I was never able to buy a master, wasn't able to get any type of momentum. And once Julie just really got her Lunar Lance, and the, both of these expansions flying higher and uh, the RPM expansion are a little bit more limited in terms of the blocks to keep the pacing high, which I do still appreciate it. She just, saw, she just kind of started whacking away at me and that was the end of the game. Yeah, so even though, as Jason said, I won both games, I didn't, you know, we just played uh, RPM and uh, and this one back to back. I, there's no comparison to me. I think RPM is the best expansion the game has. I think it's the best the game has been. And I'm going to stick with my 
well, my, sorry, my comments from the previous video, which has already come out on RPM. I think the best way to play this game is Zeal stronger than before and with the RPM expansion. There is some new stuff coming out. We've got SPD, we've got Shattered Grid that should be adding some new mechanics to the game. However, I don't know if they're gonna refine it the way that I like it. I think that those two expansions are the ones to get. And then everything else is just kind of like if you're a big fan of the IP, go ahead and pick them up, check them out. But with RPM, Zeo stronger than before, I think you've got a very good, fun deck builder. And as of right now, I can't see myself playing this game not using that combo. I will definitely experience the other expansions to see if there's something that we really like, or maybe that will bring the other expansions up in our Steam, but I haven't been a fan of really what we've been getting, uh, except for the villains from Omega Forever, which are just ridiculously strong, a lot of fun to play, but not a big fan of the heroes. And just want to caveat, these are our points of view playing the game heads up. I do think that there is an entirely different experience playing this game for players or 2v1. Now, I think the biggest challenge with that is finding the Ranger fans, depending on who is a Power Ranger fan. Like, I'm a Ranger fan. Joey's not really a Ranger fan. She plays a lot of these games to humor me, and she loves deck builders, so it's a little bit in my favor. But I don't know who else would really want to play this with me that I'd get necessarily for players to the table. I don't really have anything else to add, honestly. Uh, like I said, we talked about the positive and the negative compared it you had i'm not going to repeat everything you said so i'm ready to give it a score okay so what is your score this is six yeah i'm gonna give it the same score as a six it's solid it works there's nothing bad about it the pacing is better but i still don't think it does enough to fix some of the issues that we had in the original core box for power Rangers the deck building game i think it actually brings some of those back out whereas they were avoided in rpm so on that note, we're now going to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have new content for you. And take a look down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see some pictures of Julie and I playing the Power Rangers deck building game and some of its many expansions, there are plenty on those feeds. And then popping up in front of us are going to be links to some of our previously released videos. In front of me will be our most recent release. In front of Julie will take you back to our review of Power Rangers deck building game. I think we're going to go back to RPM since it's been our favorite content that's been produced for the game so far. And then that, we're now going to grab our drink, grab our best friend and fellow villain or ranger, depending on how you're playing the game. And we're going to remind you to keep, keep playing, playing games. games.